In his lecture series, Growing Up in the Universe, Richard Dawkins explains the purpose of life. We began by asking what flowers were for. We considered various answers and eventually concluded that flowers are for the same thing as everything else in the living kingdoms, for spreading copy me programs about, written in DNA language. The purpose of all living things, says Dawkins, is to spread copy me programs written in DNA language. DNA is basically a set of instructions for building things, but the things that are built are ultimately for making more copies of DNA. So the purpose of living things is to make copies of DNA. Flowers are for spreading around instructions for making flowers. Bees are for spreading around instructions for making bees. Elephants for spreading instructions for making elephants. And birds for making more birds. Clearly, this would include human beings. What's the purpose of you and me and Richard Dawkins? Our DNA builds its own self-copying machinery. This is what we are. We are machines built by DNA whose purpose is to make more copies of the same DNA. In the study guide that accompanies the lecture series, we read, We are machines for propagating DNA, and the propagation of DNA is a self-sustaining process. It is every living object's sole reason for living. Your sole reason for living is to make copies of a molecule. You're a machine for propagating DNA. Why is this interesting? Well, the people who tell us that our purpose in life is to make copies of DNA happen to be some of the worst people in the world when it comes to making copies of DNA. They're just really, really bad at propagating DNA. In the West, many atheists are convinced that atheism is rapidly expanding. But we shouldn't confuse whining and trolling with expanding. While many people are declaring themselves to be atheists, birth rates among atheists are so low that the atheist population is actually shrinking as a percentage of the world population. A 2015 Pew Research study titled The Future of World Religions, Population Growth Projections 2010 to 2050 is subtitled Why Muslims Are Rising Fastest and the Unaffiliated Are Shrinking as a Share of the World's Population. The unaffiliated group includes atheists and agnostics. Atheists and agnostics are shrinking as a share of the world's population. For you atheists who are yelling, but so many people are becoming atheists in America and Europe, surely we must be taking over the world, the study takes conversions into account, but concludes that by 2050, atheists, agnostics, and other people who do not affiliate with any religion, though increasing in countries such as the United States and France, will make up a declining share of the world's total population. In terms of the total number of adherents, both Christianity and Islam will continue growing. But notice that the number of Muslims is growing even more rapidly. When considered as a percentage of the world's population, Christianity is expected to stay roughly the same, while Islam is expected to increase significantly. What about atheists and agnostics? Well, the number of unaffiliated will increase slightly from 1.13 billion to 1.23 billion, but that growth rate is much slower than the growth rate of several other groups. The result is that, as a percentage of the world's population, atheism and agnosticism are declining. Why are they declining? Low birth rates. The fertility rate of the unaffiliated is just 1.7, while the fertility rate among Muslims is 3.1. In Dawkinsian terms, atheists and agnostics are poor propagators of DNA. As a group, Muslims are the best propagators of DNA. If you'd like a quick comparison, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, Christopher Hitchens, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Stephen Hawking, Michael Shermer, Lawrence Krauss, and Bill Nye the Science Guy combined have produced fewer children than Osama bin Laden. Now, remind me, what's the purpose of human beings, according to Richard Dawkins? This is what we are. We are machines built by DNA whose purpose is to make more copies of the same DNA. So if Islam leads to increased production of DNA, it's clear that Islam helps human beings fulfill their sole purpose in life. Atheism, by contrast, is detrimental to human purpose. Apart from contracting some sort of debilitating disease, nothing keeps human beings from fulfilling their purpose, like becoming an atheist. Not according to me, according to Richard Dawkins. 
This realization leads to what we'll call the Dawkins Dilemma. On one horn, if our purpose is to propagate DNA, then atheism is an obstacle, an impediment, a hindrance, a stumbling block. Atheism should therefore be rejected for its harmful impact on humanity. Here atheists will cry, but atheism is true. Sorry, but DNA doesn't care about what's true. The only criterion here is getting more copies of a molecule into the next generation, and atheism fails miserably at this task. This means that atheists like Richard Dawkins should abandon atheism and convert to Islam, an ideology that makes DNA's wildest dreams come true. On the other horn, if atheists like Richard Dawkins don't want to convert to Islam, they need a purpose that goes beyond the propagation of DNA. They need a purpose that transcends biology. They need a purpose that just isn't available on atheism. Hence, if Dawkins doesn't want to convert to Islam, he needs to reject atheism for failing to provide a purpose higher than the biological. So Dawkins can either reject atheism and convert to Islam because Islam, unlike atheism, helps him fulfill his purpose as a human being, or he can reject atheism because it doesn't provide a purpose beyond propagating DNA, and a purpose that goes beyond propagating DNA is required to avoid the first horn. Either way, atheism must be abandoned. Now, for you Muslims who are watching, cheering when I say that Islam is growing rapidly, you should click on this video to see why Islam is growing rapidly. Here's a hint. Due to the poor treatment of women in Islam, many Muslim women have little to do in life besides making babies, and this leads to high birth rates among Muslims, thus the growth of Islam. Since DNA doesn't care how Muslim men treat their wives, so long as the DNA molecule is replicated, Islam's poor treatment of women ends up making it the ultimate ideology for propagating DNA. Thus, the absurdity of Dawkins claiming that our sole purpose in life is to propagate DNA, while condemning ideologies that promote our sole purpose. But for those of us who believe that human beings were created for a higher purpose, something far more significant than making copies of a molecule, the reasons for Islam's rapid growth turn out to be evidence that it's false, in spite of its rapid growth. So before you cheer, watch this video and try facing reality.